Welcome back to yet another tutorial on Python with Simply Learn. Today we'll cover what objects and classes in Python are. So let's begin. First we look at what an object is. So in the real world, everything tangible is an object. The table, the chair, your mobile phone, your laptop, even you are an object. And in the similar manner, in Python, since you're focusing so much on an object and programming around object, so every instance in Python is an object. Now, if that is what an object is, what is a class? A class is a blueprint of similar objects. So you'll have multiple objects in programming often, and all these objects have some similar features. So a class basically holds all these objects together and gives them a common definition. Now let's better understand this through an example. So here we are considering person as a class. Now if person's a class, every person has certain features that is name, gender, age. Irrespective of who the person is, the person has to have these features. So this is something common shared by all the people. Now a person also has a behavior. And behavior basically means the functions a person is entitled to perform. So obviously there are a number of things that a person can do. But in this particular case, we look at just two of them which is talk and vote. Definitely there are some exceptions which we'll not dwell into right now. So now that we saw what features and what behavior are and how person which is a class describes these things, let's look at what an object would look like under this class person. So here we have two objects of the class person. Our first object which is on your left hand side has the features name, gender, age and the behavior talk and vote. Now every object has to have these features because these are what's defined under the class person. And in a similar manner, the object that's defined to your right also have the same features and the same behaviors. Now what is it that makes these two objects two separate entities then? It's the value of the features. So our features, name, gender, age, in either case has a different value. For example, our first object has the name Sam. Our second object has the name Mia. Gender is male and for our second object, gender is female. Age is also a different value for both our objects. Now they could have the same value. That is, there could be some common features. But if all of them have the same value, that wouldn't make sense. They wouldn't make them two separate objects. So to summarize this, person is a class. And the class defines the features name, gender and age. It defines behaviors, talk and vote. And then we defined two separate objects and gave value to the features in these objects. Now let's begin to code this example. So I'll move on to PyCharm. First thing first, let's create our class. So our class is created using the keyword class and then put down the name of your class, which in our case is person followed by colon and enter. So your class is created. Now once that your class is created, the next thing we need to focus on are the features that this class defines. So the person class defines the features name, age and gender. Now in our previous video on oops, we saw that the features or the members of a class are defined using a constructor usually. So let's create our constructor, which is def in it and once you click on in it the self parameter automatically appears self basically refers to the object that you're passing to this constructor or the object that is being created when the constructor is called now we'll give value to our three features so our features are name and that will have the value say sam gender male and age 22 now one thing that we're missing out here is that we need to remember that name, gender, age, all these are features of the class. That means these features are strictly tied to an object. That would be the object that's created when this init function is called for that particular time. So the reference to that object would be stored in self. Therefore, we won't just write name equal to Sam, but instead self.name equal to Sam. And in a similar manner, self.gender and self.age. So we have defined our features of the class person and also given it value. Now next thing is we have to define the behaviors. So behaviors are implemented through functions 
or we can say methods. So methods are basically functions, but the functions which are called through an object or tied to an object are called methods. So let's define our methods. Our first behavior is the talk behavior. So if the talk method is called, we just want to print out hi, I am, and the value of the name attribute of the object that's calling talk. Now our next behavior to be implemented is the vote behavior. So for that we'll create a method vote. And here we'll put in a condition. So if the age of the person is less than 18, the person's not eligible to vote. So we'll print this out. And if the person is above 18, then we'll print out that the person is eligible to vote. So if self.age is less than equal to 18, I am not eligible to vote. Actually less than 18. If the person is 18, they are eligible to vote. Else print, I am eligible to vote. So the two behaviors of the class person are implemented through methods now. Now all that's left for us to do is to create the actual object. So how do you create the object? If my object name is obj, I'll write obj equal to and then put in the type of the object. And the type of our object is of course the class. Now here's something that you need to understand. Everything that you create in Python is actually an object. So I'll explain this a little more in my console. So if I have a variable say a and I give this variable the value 100. We know that 100 is an integer type value. Therefore that makes a an integer type variable. But then if I check the type of this variable, it shows class int. That means the type of a is the integer class which makes a an object. In the similar manner, if I have another value to a, say simply learn and now if I check the type of a, we'll see that a is now an object of class string. str is basically the short form of string. Therefore, everything in Python is an object of some class and that is how our object here obj is an object of the type person where person is our class. So now that we have created an object, during this creation of the object, our constructor will be called and the features of this object will be given some value. Now we can use this object to call its behaviors. So this can be done either in this manner. So you put in person which is the type of our object dot the method and within the brackets as a parameter you can pass the object. In the similar manner, we'll also call our behavior vote and again pass obj within it. Now let's run this code. Just pull up my console here. Run the program and as you can see here, so we created an object and the object got its values as mentioned in the constructor that is in it. And then we call the talk behavior or the talk method using our object obj. And this printed our first line, which is hi, I am Sam. And then we call the vote behavior. And in the vote behavior, the age of our object was checked. Since our object's age was greater than 18, it says I'm eligible to vote. Now these two lines where we are calling our methods can be done in a different way. Instead of calling it with the type of our object and then passing our object, we can directly call it with our object. So we can have it in this way, obj dot talk off. And over here, obj dot vote off. So we must remember that in this particular case, where we are creating classes and objects and have this kind of a structure, all these methods are actually tied to the object, which is why we cannot just say talk off. We need an object to call it or at least pass an object to this method. Let's run the code now. So it's the exact same result works just fine. Now in this case, we just created one object and the values for this object were predetermined and just put in our constructor. Now what if we want to create two separate objects and the values for these objects vary. So in this case, so to demonstrate this, we'll create two objects just like in our example previously. We'll have our first object which is obj1 
Now, both these objects will be, of course, of the type person, which is our class. So, put that there. Now, every time the object is created, automatically our init method is called. So, if our object needs to have separate values, what we can do is instead of putting in predetermined values here, we can pass the values for the features of the object in the brackets. So, if I want my name to be Sam, I pass Sam, my gender and the age. So, these are the three values for the three features that this object has, which we'll pass into the constructor or the init method. Now, in the init method, we need to be able to accept these values. So, other than self, we'll have one variable which will store the value of the name when it's passed from here. We'll store it in variable n, n for name, and the gender we'll store it in variable g, age we'll store in variable a. So, what happens here is basically these values that you pass within the parenthesis when you're creating your object are sent to your init method. Now, in the init method, we are putting down these three variables to accept the values. So, these three variables store these three values. So, Sam goes to N, male goes to G and 22 goes into A. Now, instead of putting in the strings here, self.name can be equal to N. So, the value which n got is now put into cell.name and the value which g received is put into cell.gender and the value which a received will be put into self.age. So, that way we created our object and provided a way in which we can actually have unique values for each object. So, now if we have another object say obj2 which is also of the type person we can put in different values into these parentheses. So say our second object's name is Jessie. She's female and 16 years old. So now these values will go into these variables and will be assigned to these features. So for obj1, if I say obj1.name, the name would be Sam. If I say obj2.name, it would result in Jessie. We'll see that now. Let me just print that out obj1.name and obj2.name. So, as you see, although our feature is the same, we are printing the feature name in both the cases, the object to which this feature is tied is different. So, the first time it's printing name related to object 1 and the second time it's printing the name related to object 2. Now, this is not what we want to show here. Here, what we want to do is after creating our two objects, we'll call the methods using these objects. So, obj1.talkoff and obj1.voteoff. Now, we'll call the same two methods using obj2. So, obj2.talkoff and obj2.voteoff. Run the program and here's our output. So, what happened here is obj1 was created and the three features which are name, gender and age were given the respective values for obj1 and the similar manner obj2 also received the values for its various features. Now, we used obj1 to call our two methods talk and vote. At talk, all we did is print our name of the object. So, the first time when we called with obj1, it printed hi, I am Sam because Sam was the name related to our first object. And then we called the vote method using obj1 itself. So, our first object's age was 22, which means it's eligible to vote. And that is what's printed here. I am eligible to vote. Then we call the same two methods using obj2 and got different results. So, obj2's name was printed here, which is Jessie. And then Jessie is underage, that is she is 16. So, it printed out I am not eligible to vote when obj2.vote was called. So, that is the basic crux of what objects and classes are. I hope this was clear. If you have any doubts, please post them in the comment section below and we'll definitely get back to you. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button below. Also subscribe to our channel if you have not yet as we have a lot more great videos coming up for you. So stay tuned and see you all next time. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.